I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, the weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where we take closer, more in-depth looks at the coolest and most happening things going on in the world of comics and superheroes. And on today's show, we're looking at Gwenpool, issue number one. Yes, that's right. In the grand tradition of Spider-Gwen, we now have Gwenpool. Maybe you read her backup stories in Howard the Duck, maybe you didn't, but all you need to know is now she's getting her own solo series. So let's hop on into issue number one. So as we join the comic, the unbelievable Gwen Poole, that is Gwen first name, Pool last name, is trying to deposit a bunch of her hard-earned mercenary money, which is difficult considering she doesn't have a license or any form of identification, really, because she's not from the Marvel Universe, she's actually from our universe. Pretty much this entire first half of the comic is a prologue meant to catch you up if, like me, you didn't read the Gwen Poole backup stories in Howard the Duck. The bank comes under attack by masked robbers, and Gwen Poole is more than happy to stand up and defend the people, and also to kill some people while she's at it. I must admit, it is pretty entertaining to see this sweet little demure woman unloading on bad guys with a machine gun without a care in the world. Another thing you might very well have noticed is much like Deadpool, Gwenpool is aware that she's in a comic book, but more so than that, because she is from our world, she's grown up reading Marvel comics and knows the rules and tropes better than most. In fact, that's a big motivator for why she chose to become a superhero once she got to this world, because as she she puts it, hey, nothing bad happens to the good guys, right? Yeah, well, you know, that's debatable. I mean, talk to Frank Castle and Matt Murdock about that one. I think a better thing you should have said was, nothing bad happens to the heroes that doesn't eventually work itself out down the line. For all of her hard work saving the bank and its money, Gwenpool ends up getting arrested by the police anyway and gets put next to the hacker who was helping out his uncle during the robbery. Gwenpool is quick to deputize this guy as her new sidekick because, hey, if she's going to be taken seriously, as a hero, she needs a sidekick, she needs some tech support, and this guy seems good for that job. The cop takes mercy on the two kids, seeing them as wayward idealists, but whose hearts are ultimately in the right place. He lets Gwenpool go, but he also takes all the money that she was trying to put in the bank. And thus begins the truly unbelievable adventures of Gwenpool, and really, I can't think of a better descriptor than unbelievable. It's nice to know this series is totally leaning right into its own absurdity. From there, we flash forward to an unspecified amount of time in the future, where Gwenpool has been hired to take out a bunch of sentinels. How does she choose to defeat them, considering that she has no superpowers or even a healing factor? Well, she realizes that these sentinels have the exact same attack patterns as these sentinels in the classic X-Men arcade game. Good jeez, the amount of money that I poured into that game over the years. Gwenpool's nonsensical and chaotic behavior has kind of gained her a reputation in the underground mercenary scenes of New York, so much to the point that her first person speaking contact doesn't want to give her any more work. Not that any of this stops her, though, from pulling a job that is way beyond her pay grade, stopping interdimensional gun runners from having a meeting with Hydra agents. This, by all rights, should be a suicide mission, but it seems one of Gwenpool's other powers, despite being aware that she's in a Marvel comic book, is also being incredibly, incredibly lucky. By the time she actually makes the scene, everyone is dead. The mysterious mercenary who actually did all the hard work is calling into his boss, but Gwen is just able to sneak up on him and push him through a portal to his death. Later that night, Gwen and her hacker buddy happily celebrate a job well done, not thinking to themselves that anyone could possibly come looking for reports reprisal for her actions. Gwen herself even jokes, what are they going to do, kill me off in my first issue? That never happens. Unfortunately for her, her luck seems to run out as Modok comes in a flying warship. Modok says that because Gwenpool managed to kill his most skilled agent, now she will become his most skilled agent whether she likes it or not. The unbelievable Gwenpool issue number one is ridiculous, and it knows it's ridiculous. It's also kind of fascinating in its own way. If you'll notice in the main Deadpool book, the character of Deadpool has in many ways calmed down and become less insane. He doesn't even have all those same text box gags that he used to. Wade Wilson has almost always been aware that he's in a comic book, but he was always of that universe. Gwenpool has an interesting perspective that, you know, she's in a comic, she knows she's in a comic, and she's a fan of comics to top it all off. Tropes are her weapon of choice, and because of that she thinks she can't be touched, only at the end of this issue we find out that indeed she can be. It's a funny gag and an interesting concept but I have to wonder if it's sustainable. Will the joke continue to be funny multiple issues in? Will they grow Gwenpool as a character? Or can they even do that for a character who's such a walking, talking gag? I don't doubt this book will find an audience. I'm just not exactly sure if that audience will include me. Overall, I did enjoy it. I did smile. I would give this one an 8. Hey, everyone.
everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer? Or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.